Till now, we have been studying converters in open loop. We studied the buck, boost, uh, buck converter, the boost converter, the buck boost converter, isolated converters like the forward, flyback, uh, uh, the uh, half bridge, full bridge, push pull, uh, and such converters where the open loop operation was described. But the uh, ultimate objective is to see that the output voltage is well regulated in the sense that if there is a variation in the input voltage, variation in the temperature or even variation in the load, the output voltage V0 has to be uh, regulated to a more or less constant value. This would be the objective uh, that we uh, would like to put before ourselves for any kind of a power supply. Now to do that, we need to have a controller and feedback the output voltage and uh, the controller should uh, take a decision based on the error and uh, accordingly change the duty cycle, uh, which is actually the uh, control input for, the, for uh, most of the uh, controllers, uh, most of the DC-DC uh, converters. So in order uh, to do this regulation, uh, V0 is fed back and uh, uh, compared with the reference and uh, passed on to a controller, which could be a, a proportional or a proportional integral or a PID proportional integral derivative type of uh, controller and the output of which goes to a PWM modulator, pulse width modulator and uh, eventually to the gate drive and the switch, the switch, the controllable switch which we have used till now in almost all of our open loop DC-DC converters. So this would be the plan uh, while uh, closing the loop. So in this um, section of the uh, video lecture, I would, uh, I will try to focus on closed looping the converters. So I will take uh, examples. Um, uh, I, I will take examples like the buck converter, uh, the boost converter, and try to close uh, the loop in a negative feedback way, and then see how the controller works. And then probably we can look at some simulation examples so that you get some uh, practice. Um, uh, on how to go about doing the uh, closed loop operation of DC-DC converters. And same concept, similar concept can be applied even to the isolated converters and other DC-DC uh, uh, open loop uh, converters uh, which you may encounter in future. Let us discuss the closed loop operation of the pump converter. The uh, 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 process is uh, similar uh, even if it is for any other type of converter. So let us draw the uh, buck converter circuit first. So we have an input and let us say it is coming from the battery for now. It would come from the output of the rectifier too. And let us say I have a switch. Now this switch which I am showing as a BJT can as well be an IGBT or even a MOSFET and I have this diode followed by the output filter circuit which is the inductor and the capacitor combination. You are now very well familiar with the buck converter circuit. Now this is the buck converter circuit. This is R0 and the voltage across that is V0 and let's say that 
we are giving the get drive to the base of the transistor and we will sense we need to sense the output voltage so this is what you call the sense variable and this is the control variable or even control input so the control input here is variation in d variation in the duty cycle so let us sense the output pass it through out appropriate circuitry so let us say we sense it appropriately amplify it or attenuate it and and bring it to a comparator a difference amplifier so here let us set the v not reference this is what is desired v not reference is what is desired and we need to compare the feedback v not feedback value with the v not reference value and the difference gives the error e and the error is fed to the controller now this is the controller which uh, can be p pi or a pid and in many cases it can be a proportional integral controller and the output of this pi controller is compared with a triangle now this is a triangle carrier which actually determines and defines the switching frequency of the converter and this vc is the compare compare signal let us say this is vc control voltage is the compare signal for the triangle and which will produce the modulation uh, pwm modulation so this actually is your pwm circuitry which will go through a gate drive circuitry gate or a base drive and given to the gate or base of the power semiconductor switch so in a block schematic manner this is how the closed loop system looks like so the blue portion of the system here on this page all this blue portion is the open loop system and to that in the blue portion you saw that you just gave a control vc as a constant voltage compared it with the ramp and that was the pwm module compare and the pwm generation gate drive and giving it as a switch on and off condition for the power semiconductor switch and all the rest of the blue portion were the power circuit portion so vc constant and all this portion along with the power components form the open loop system and now what we have added is a sense circuitry which should measure the output voltage that needs to be controlled appropriately amplified or attenuated and then filtered and then given to a comparator which compares the feedback signal with a reference signal this is actually the set point this is the, our desired value what the v not should eventually be 
it's compared with that and an error signal is generated which is the difference between the set point or the reference value and the feedback value the error is given to the controller and the controller will generate a output control output which is vc which gets compared with a uh, triangular carrier generates the pwm and switches the transistor on and off in accordance with the uh, error in such a way that the error here is made zero once the error here goes zero then v not feedback and v not reference are same and then we can say that the output is regulated and constant irrespective of changes in v changes in temperature or even changes in the load so this is our objective and this is how the control system would look like later on probably what you could do is you could replace this blue portion of the power circuit by different dc dc converters you could connect a boost converter you could replace this with a boost converter but appropriately give the control input to the specific um, power semiconductor device in its specific position so that it will do the job of uh, uh, switching on and off the particular converter uh, and act as a single pole double throw switch and likewise you could also give it to the uh, isolated converters like the forward flyback converters and other types of converters now let us uh, just examine uh, this controller aspect a bit more uh, before we go to the simulation now consider the controller and uh, 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 let us focus on these three variables e vc and the gain of the controller i have indicated pi a proportional integral uh, integral convert, uh, controller but let me erase this and replace it by a general gain k so let me put the value k here so now this is the gain of the controller and let us try to look at the play of these three uh, variables e k and vc e is the error input to the controller vc is the control output voltage so they are related in this following manner e error is equal to vc by k rather straightforward uh, relationship now when will when is e equal to 0 now this is a important question that we need to answer let's say when is e equal to 0 now looking at the equation e, k, e is 0 either first case vc is equal to 0 or second case k tends to infinity now let us take the first case if vc is equal to 0 what it means that i am grounding it at this point this point is grounded now the moment you ground that point it means that there is no meaning in putting all this controller uh, like in the open loop operation where we had given a fixed value of voltage to vc this becomes a open loop operation the whole circuit is in open loop then the, what is the meaning of uh, doing closed loop so uh, closed loop operations cease to exist so we cannot make vc as zero so let us go for the other option k tending to infinity if k is infinity then whatever may be the value of vc vc divided by infinity will give me zero error 
So in the case of PI controller, the PI controller has a gain k which is infinite as uh, as the system uh, uh, tends towards a DC situation or a stabilized situation. So let me take for example a fresh page. In the case of a I this is omega versus omega and let us say this is db gain in db gain of the uh, i in db. So let us first take i what is i? i is integral i is integral and uh, let us say nothing but 1 by s. So 1 by s is nothing but a Bode plot which goes at minus 20 dB per decade. Minus 20 dB per decade. And what is the value at omega is equal to 0? At omega is equal to 0, here the d again is infinite. So if you put an integral, the gain is infinite at DC or at stable region which means that the error is 0. So an integra integrator will provide you the means to achieve 0 steady state error because of an infinite gain. Whatever may be the value of Vc, error is equal to 0 because Vc by infinity will be 0. So if you put a scalar scaling value ki, then what basically happens is depending upon whether the ki is greater than greater than 1 or less than 1 gain or attenuation, you will be choosing different parallels which will change the bandwidth. So it, you have a measure of control on the speed of response. So Ki is one aspect. Then let us say instead of allowing it to, instead of allowing this to go in the fashion like this, at somewhere this point. I try to flatten it out. Then the high frequency, in the high frequency of regions of the omega, I have a bit more gain and this can improve my dynamics which means if you have to flatten out the curve, so my integral action is here, the integrator and at this point you want to wave shape it you want to shape the gain curve like this instead of it allow, allow instead of allowing it to go at minus 20 db per decade you make, make it 0 db per decade what does it mean you are putting a zero here you introduce a zero at this point so let us say that i introduce a proportional part kp and you add it to the integral part. Now let us say if this is E and this is Vc. So what is the transfer function between Vc and E? Now this is Kp plus Ki by S. Kp plus Ki by S. Now this is equal to Kp s plus Ki, further simplifying I will say Kp s plus Ki by Kp by s. So just by introducing a proportional gain, you have now introduced a 0 at s is equal to minus Ki by Kp. So this at k 
ki by kp ratio corresponding s omega you have a zero and that has flattened out this curve and then you have got additional high frequency gain advantage which will improve the uh, transient response a better bit better so this is the structure of the pi controller when viewed from the frequency domain and you see that uh, the pi controller has potential to have infinite value at dc or infinite steady state gain and because of the infinite steady state gain the pi controller is capable of giving zero steady state error you could add a d much higher to improve the transient response but most of the time it is not uh, needed so you don't need to have a pi d controller most of the cases pi controller suffices when you add a d be careful because you are increasing the gain or you are introducing a derivative component in the highly noisy high frequency zone and it can amplify noise so you have to be very very careful by introducing while introducing d or the derivative so this is the concept of the pi so going back into uh, the uh, previous page I will now erase this generic k now and say that I would like to put a pi here because pi will give me a value of k is equal to infinity inf uh, gain of infi infinite value uh, at dc. Uh, so therefore the steady state um, uh, value of the error will be equal to 0. So therefore, it is uh, a good practice to start off with the PI topology for most of the controllers and then uh, take it from there, tune it and take it from there.